Thank you for joining me on Synthesis Workshop. Today's a named reaction episode, and we'll be talking about the Kulinkovich reaction. This is an important reaction for accessing cyclopropane motifs, which, as we'll see in a little bit, are often strategic intermediates in organic synthesis. Generally speaking, the Kulinkovich reaction entails the formation of a cyclopropanol or a cyclopropylamine from an ester or an amide. For example, treatment of a generic ester with ethyl magnesium bromide and titanium tetraisoproxide results in the formation of a cyclopropanol product. If we use a substituted Grignard reagent rather than ethyl magnesium bromide, we can generate cis disubstituted cyclopropanol products. From these cases, we can start to formulate a general reactivity pattern for this reaction, where we can understand that the incoming Grignard reagent is being used to generate a 1,2 dicarbanion equivalent in situ. Perhaps even more interestingly, when an alkene is present, that alkene can be incorporated into the product, which in this case is also a cis substituted cyclopropanol. In fact, this is the type of reactivity that leads to the key annulation in the Michelitzia synthesis of anhydroreanidol, which we saw in episode 38. So taking the first reaction on the last slide as our model, let's see how the mechanism looks. To start, Titanium tetraisoperoxide reacts with two equivalents of ethyl magnesium bromide to generate a dialkyl dialkoxy titanium species, which can undergo a beta hydride elimination to extrude ethane. The catalytic intermediates generated through that process are understood to be a titanocyclopropane and a titanium ethylene complex. These species can react with our ester starter material to form a complex, which, after the addition of a further equivalent of ethyl magnesium bromide, leads to the generation of an oxytitanocyclopentane 8 complex. This intermediate can then expel the alkoxide substituent bearing the red ball, which leads to another mixture of catalytic species. Using the one on the left, we can see how the electron flow can lead to the formation of a cyclopropane ring in the subsequent step. Finally, we can have a ligand exchange, where another equivalent of ethyl magnesium bromide is used to liberate a cyclopropyl alkoxide, which can form a cyclopropanol product on workup. This step also results in the regeneration of the dialkyl dialkoxy titanium species that we started the cycle with. Aside from the parent Kalinkovich reaction, there are a number of related variants that follow the same mechanistic framework. Let's take a look at those now. The first one is called the kulinkovich demayeri reaction, or the Demayeri variation. Here we're using an amide instead of an ester, which results in the formation of a cyclopropylamine rather than a cyclopropanol. In a foundational paper from Chaplinsky and Demayeri, the authors show these examples where acetamides or formamides could be converted into cyclopropylamine products in good yield. The kulinkovich demayeri reaction also has an interrupted variant, which is exemplified in this next case where Finn, Durstein, and Seabirth treated this complex substrate bearing a lactam with a pendant alkene with cyclopentyl magnesium bromide and titanium tetraisoproxide. The outcome was the formation of a single carbon-carbon bond, allowing the closure of the southernmost ring. Here, it's noteworthy that no cyclopropane was formed, unlike the prior examples. The reason for that being that if we draw the oxytitana cyclopentane intermediate, we can see that nitrogen-assisted cleavage of this ring would lead to an unfavorable anti-Brett system, so no cyclopropane can be formed through this pathway. Instead, we can understand the observed product as being derived directly from the oxytitana cyclopentane intermediate. In another system, the same authors show that with a different lactam bearing a terminal alkene, the same reagent combination can be employed to generate an oxytitanocyclopentane intermediate, which can lead to the formation of two products, A and B, with 4 to 1 diester selectivity in the former case. These divergent reactivity paths emerge through a common oxytitanocyclopentane 8 complex, which can either lead to protonation via the red arrow to form A, or carbon carbon bond formation via the blue arrow to form the cyclopropane in B. Another interesting variation of this reaction is the Kulinkovich Simoniac reaction. In this case, a starting material bearing a nitrile is treated with ethyl magnesium bromide and titanium tetraisoproxide, followed by ethereal BF3, to form a cyclopropylamine. In these examples from Bertus and Simoniac in 2001, the authors show that you can form cyclopropylamines directly from simple nitrile bearing starting materials using this method. The role of BF3 in this variation is shown here, where we can see that the initial titanocyclopropane reacts with the nitrile to give an azotitanocycle which requires BF3 as a Lewis acid in order to undergo the desired ring contraction, which leads to cyclopropane formation. Now, let's return to the parent reaction and see some recent examples of how this reaction is being applied today. In this first example, the dye group employed a Kalinkovich reaction in their synthesis of bisdehydroneostamonanine and bisdehydrostamonanine. While standard Kalinkovich conditions did not provide good yields for the transformation shown, 
The authors found that by using chloro triisoproxy titanium and ethyl magnesium bromide, which were conditions pioneered by the Cori group, they were able to form the desired cyclopropane in the product. In the next step, the authors were able to strategically leverage the cyclopropanol motif by using the Weymouth catalyst, benzoquinone, and carbon monoxide to carry out a carbonylate of lactamization. This reaction is likely proceeding through initial carbon-carbon bond cleavage triggered by palladium-2, which leads to a carbonyl intermediate that can undergo ketalization. The resulting ketal can then undergo CO insertion to form a six-membered palladocycle, which can undergo a reductive elimination to produce the product as well as palladium-0, which can be oxidized back to palladium-2 using benzoquinone. This type of transformation has been explored in more detail by the Dye and Weymouth groups in the reference at the bottom. The product of this sequence was then able to be carried on to complete the synthesis of bistihydroneostamonanine and bistihydrostamonanine. In another recent example from the dye group, the authors once again found a way to take advantage of the Kalinkovich reaction, this time for the synthesis of hyperions A and B. Starting from the terminal alkene shown, chlorotriisoproxy titanium was used once again to initiate a Kalinkovich reaction, this time with an aromatic ester. This reaction provided the product shown in 2.5 to 1 dr with a major diastereomer shown. Now, the authors treated with copper 2 triflate and benzoquinone, which led directly to the formation of hyperion A. This reaction is another interesting product transformation for cyclopropanols, and is proposed to proceed through a selective carbon-carbon bond cleavage, allowing the carbon marked in orange to form a carbon-metal bond, leading to tetrahydrofuran formation after an oxidation and reductive elimination. Moving on, potassium terbutoxide could be used to allow the epimerization of hyperion A at the carbon marked in pink, resulting in Hyperion B in a 45% yield. Importantly, this entire sequence could also be carried out in an enantiospecific sense, which allowed the authors to access enantio-enriched versions of both of these targets, starting from the enantio-enriched secondary alcohol starting material. In one last example, the Zhang group recently employed the Kalinkovich reaction in their total synthesis of suaviolene. The authors started by treating this enantio-enriched starting material with typical Kalinkovich conditions, which converted the ester into a cyclopropane. Importantly, this occurred without any erosion of enantiopurity. Then, they found that by treating with copper 2 chloride in air, they could form the bridged product shown. This was proposed to occur through an initial oxidation of the amine to an aminium using copper 2 as an oxidant. Then, coordination of copper 2 to the cyclopropanol moiety was proposed to trigger a ring cleavage step that resulted in the formation of a radical, which could undergo radical addition into the aminium to form a nitrogen-centered cation radical. Finally, reduction of that cation radical with copper 1 was proposed to lead to the product. The authors were then able to carry on the product of this reaction in order to complete the synthesis of suaviolene. In combination with the palladium and copper transformations from the dye group, this is another great demonstration of how the Kalinkovich reaction can set up downstream transformations originating from cyclopropane motifs. And that'll finish up this named reaction episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, help us out by telling your peers about this resource. Check our webpage, synthesis-workshop.com, and follow us on Twitter to stay up to date. See you all next time.